Well, hello, and welcome to Tea with Jesus for this week. I had thought that last week I would be finishing up all of the chapter, uh, all of chapter six in the book of Ephesians, but I didn't want to rush um, going through the, that piece of the armor that we were discussing last week, and so we'll be able to, I think, finish this book up this week. And um, I will probably do just a moment of review here just to kind of go back through the different pieces of the armor and then we have one left for tonight um, and then there'll be a little bit of, of some verses left where Paul's just talking to um, these beloved people in Ephesus so let's go to Ephesians 6 and I'm gonna go ahead and read 13 through 17 therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So now we know that um, we have just have completed now all the different pieces of the armor. And the one we have left here is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now I want you to notice something here. We have a helmet and um, the breastplate, uh, the, the girdle piece that they wore, wore around their middle. We have um, protection on the feet. We have a shield. So all of these pieces of the armor are for protection and they're defensive. In other words, you are wearing them to be protected um, from injury. But the sword is the first one of these that is an offensive weapon. It is used to go against the enemy. It is an offensive weapon. And um, so I think that's really interesting um, that the Word of God um, can be used as a powerful offensive weapon. Um, I'll get into the rest of these scriptures in just a moment um, to kind of finish this idea that Paul was putting together. But I want to really talk about that. Um, one of the, the wonderful examples that we can find um, in the life of Jesus here on earth was how he used the Word of God when the enemy was trying to tempt him when he was in the desert and in the wilderness. I want us to go ahead and take a look at that. Let's go to Matthew 4. And this is at the very beginning of the ministry that Jesus had after he turned 30. Um, he had just been baptized by John. The Holy Spirit had just descended on him like a dove. And God's voice had just been just spoken out, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. So this had just happened. And then, starting verse 1 in Matthew 4, Then Jesus, Jesus was led up by the Spirit, into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. I mean, that's 40 days and 40 nights with, without, you know, anything to eat. So now he was actually really, um, I think he began to be very hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, that's the devil, when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But Jesus answered. He answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And so he answered this temptation with the word of God. And that is actually Deuteronomy 8.3. That, that's what Jesus is quoting. Well, then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, 
He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Once again, Jesus was using the word of God to, to against the enemy and against his temptation. That would have been Deuteronomy 6.16. A couple of things I want us to notice here. One is that, um, you know, Jesus was raised where he was was taught the word that they had. The, the Old Testament scriptures were um, taught by him, uh, taught to him, I'm sure, in the, um, as he would go to um, to worship, and I'm sure he was taught that. So he knew um, he knew the the scriptures very very well. And um, look how that the, even the devil's trying to twist the word of God and use it um, to, you know, try to tempt Jesus and to, to get him to not trust God or to get him to not do things the way that he knew his father wanted him to. Because this whole section here, he shall give his angels charge of you and in their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against the stone. That's in Psalm ninety-one twelve. So the devil was really trying to twist the scripture Let's look at how, um, you know, Jesus really used the word of God to to stop the temptations of the devil. Um, we have to realize that the enemy does try to twist truth. And he's been doing it, I've said this before, he's been doing it since the Garden of Eden. Are you sure that's exactly what God meant? Are you sure you can trust him? Okay, so there's been two temptations now. And then in verse 8, this is um in Matthew 4. Again the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Whew, boy, that is, that's a lot of gall for the devil to say that to Jesus. But oh my goodness. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan. Sometimes it says, Get behind me, Satan. For it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. And then the devil left him. And behold, angels came and ministered to him. So he once again used the word of God to stop the lies of the devil. That would have been Deuteronomy 6, 13. So Jesus was one that was a wonderful example of how we can use the word of God to... Um, as a as a weapon against the devil and his lies and his deception and his temptations I remember um, a really incredible time in our life um, my son um, was two and um, happy-go-lucky never stopped moving you know totally active little cute baby and um he started having really severe night terrors, and they were terrible. I, it just, it was awful. I'd pray for him, and I would, you know, just, I'd pray for him, I'd pray over him, I'd rebuke the devil. I just was wanting so much for the, the um, this to stop, because it'd wake him up, you know, he'd wake up screaming, and he'd be so frightened. And the Lord really spoke to me that he wanted Barry to be able to have the a way of being able to kind of battle this himself, he was two years old, but I just, the Lord really made me, just helped me to understand that he wanted Barry to be able to have the weapons to, to be able to fight against the, this um, terrible fear that the enemy was bringing on him. So my little two-year-old, who of course couldn't read, I taught him, um, what time I am afraid I will trust in thee. And the scripture in James, um, one, seven, I had, didn't have this looked up ahead because I just thought of this, but I want to give you the actual scripture. But the scripture says, God has not given us a spirit of, of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I love that scripture. And that is one that we directly taught to him. Um, and I will have that. I'll make sure we get that scripture reference written down to you. It's in James. But God has not given us a spirit of fear. And if it's not in James, I'll make sure I have the right place on there. But it says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And I, I helped him memorize that. 
and then I wrote both of those scriptures and put them up on his wall um, right on his little bottom bunk in the bunk bed and um, he didn't know how to read them but he recognized what each of them was and so I taught him I said if you start getting really scared and you wake up scared like that you just say those words you say just pray to the Lord what time I'm afraid I will trust in thee I'll trust in you and God has not given me a spirit of fear but of power and love and a sound mind and when that little guy was speaking the word of God the night terrors talked um, and he was able to take authority um, against the enemy with the word of God to stop those night terrors and that really I thought that was wonderful absolutely wonderful let's go to Hebrews 4 now we're gonna look at Hebrews 4 12 and um, I'm gonna read 12 through 16 Hebrews 4 12 through 16 for the Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him with whom we must give account. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain grace, obtain mercy, and find grace to help in time of need. Now I know that the um, those last few scripture verses weren't directly about the Word of God. They're just so beautiful I couldn't resist sharing them with you. But this does say in verse 11 that the Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. Um, I think that's a, it's, it's just able to cut right to the truth. And I think that is really, really cool. Let's go to 2 Timothy 2.15 says here to be diligent to present yourself approved to God a worker who does not need to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth and 3 chapter 3 verses 12 through 17 and this is um, you know uh, Paul writing to Timothy who was actually kind of a someone he'd taken under his wing and was mentoring and Timothy had become one of the pastors and as a young man and uh, Paul is encouraging him he really loved Timothy like a son starting in verse 12 he says yes and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse deceiving and being deceived but you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of knowing from whom you have learned them and that from the childhood you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction and in righteousness that the man of God may be complete and thoroughly equipped for every good work so when we want to resist the devil the Word of God is powerful for one thing it helps us to know the truth so that we won't believe lies and we can use the word with when we want to just tell the devil you know to go away and it's it's backed by the truth of God it's backed by um, what what God has said and the devil has to listen to that and I think that's wonderful and so when it says in James four seven therefore submit to God resist the devil and he will flee from you the word um, is a wonderful way it's a wonderful way to be able to um, tell the devil to get lost 
and when he tries to accuse us and he tries to break our hearts and all these different things um, the word will tell us the truth that God has revealed to us and we will know that we are beloved and safe in the Lord and anyway the sword of the spirit knowing the word um, can be so powerful in our lives I, I cannot recommend enough um, just find some different ones that have really meant something to you and that you feel are, are really powerful truths and just put it down on a little card and stick it on the mirror in the bathroom or something but memorize them um, it is really really wonderful just to be able to have the Word of God right there in your mind in Psalm 119 11 your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you so just um, really incredibly recommend that you get the word in there and and it's it'll be there to encourage you and so that when the enemy tries to make you do something wrong or, or make a bad decision you can have the truth right in there you can speak out and God's word is a sword and it will it will drive away the enemy and um I uh, really have um, appreciated a story that we actually have a book about it um, about a young man named Vanya who was a young Russian soldier in the USSR uh, many years ago and um, a devoted Christian and he'd grown up uh, with the, the privilege of being able to have God's Word around which um, a lot of times at that time in the USSR it wasn't possible but he had it somebody has sure taught him God's Word anyway he became a Russian soldier and then he came under terrific persecution because of his faith in Christ and it's a wonderful story I mean the miracles that God did in this young man's life um, and the things that he did to touch others but there were many times when he was just locked away in solitary for a long time and certainly with no access to the Word of God but he would be able to sit and just go through all the scripture that he had memorized that he knew and it was such a comfort to him to have that and that really spoke to me a lot that that was there for him right when he needed it and I think that's really really was wonderful and um, he uh, he really touched a lot of lives and he eventually gave his life um, and his his whole life had been so full of love and of the absolute light of God in his life of his salvation that um, he made a big impact on a lot of people so anyway his name was Vanya and uh, I just remember it touched me a lot that the, knowing the scriptures had, had helped him so much all right so if we go back into Ephesians 6 I'm gonna start now with verse 17 and go to verse 24 which will complete the chapter and the book of Ephesians and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit which is the Word of God praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the Saints and for me that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak but that you also may know my affairs and how I am doing Tychicus Tychicus I think that's how it's pronounced um, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord will make all things known to you whom I have sent to you for this very purpose that you may know our affairs and that he may comfort your hearts peace to the brethren and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ grace be with all those who love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity amen isn't that neat that he was asking them to please pray for all the Saints and then to pray for him now he's in prison at this time he says I'm an ambassador in chains um, and I'm sure he had a great many needs but the main thing he's asking them to pray is that he could be bold and he could know the words to say to share the truth of salvation of Jesus Christ he's an ambassador for Christ even as he is imprisoned 
And he's asking, please just pray that I will be bold and know all the right things to say, to proclaim the gospel of Christ. And then he sent um, a, a beloved brother to reassure them, to let everybody know how he was doing and all, all the things that were going on. And um, I love that this is real people. You know, the, he's writing to real people and he's sending someone to encourage them and to let them know if he's okay. And then just sending them peace and love with faith. From God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with those who love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. That's really wonderful. So we've been able to com complete the book of Ephesians, the letter from Paul as he's imprisoned in Rome to all of his beloved um, beloved friends and family in the Lord that was in that were in Ephesus. So all right. Well, I really pray that we'll come all of us will come to understand more and more what the armor really can mean in our life and to believe God for for all the things he's brought us. Look at this wonderful list just one more time. Truth, righteousness, the gospel of peace, faith, salvation, and his word. All listed here as parts of the armor that we have. I think that's great. Alrighty, um, why don't we pray? And um, I'll be praying about where God wants me to go at this point um, into other scripture, see what the Lord wants. Lord, please give us just a hunger for your word and help us to really read it and to believe you and to know that you know what you're talking about. And I pray that, that the truth that you reveal to us as we read in your word, in your Bible, Lord, that that can, can be understood and actually kind of come to life in us that we would really understand what it is that you want us to know. Because really, I just want to get to know you who are with me and in me and and are, oh God, everything, everything that I absolutely must have to be okay is, is you, it's in you. And God, I pray we can come to know you through your word and that we can come to actively recognize the armor that we wear and to actively use your word to stop the plans and the lies of the enemy and to not allow him to bring destruction. So I just, I once again just want to lift everybody up. Please encourage them, strengthen them. Lord, may your spirit just rise up in them. And Lord, help us to never be ashamed of your name in these hard and dark times. God, I really pray that we will be a light. And Lord, may your light shine brighter as darkness gets darker. So Lord, we love you and I ask it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining with me, and um, just enjoy this wonderful, wonderful book. <laughs> All right, God bless you, and I will see you next time.